This is the sitting meditation that goes with week four, recognizing reactivity. Um, so in this meditation, we can tune in to body sensations, thoughts and feelings, um, but with a kind of intention of perhaps noticing if they're pleasant or unpleasant and exploring how to bring mindfulness to this. Um, maybe exploring also ways that we can use this information to explore what needs of ours are being met, things that make us feel good, or what needs uh, are maybe asking for attention. And I uh, don't know if you can hear, but there's a thunderstorm coming overhead. My dog is a little bit nervous, so uh, it's a good meditation for recognising reactivity. So. If you hear any noises or any sounds during the meditation, just make it part of the practice. So we're going to begin, as always, just by uh, finding a posture that invites a sense of relaxed but dignified awareness. Not tense, as best you can, relaxed. And because we're going to be taking our attention inwards, either a lowered gaze or perhaps your eyes closed. And as we come into this posture, dropping into the meditation by noticing the shift from the thinking mind into being in this moment as an observer to what is already here. So noticing what the senses already know, anything that's coming into this meditation with you. Maybe physical sensations in the body, perhaps you've just come in from somewhere and you've sat down and your body's still a little bit agitated. Maybe it's the end of the day and you're feeling quite tired. Maybe you've just had your morning coffee. You can feel the caffeine in your system. And perhaps even there's something on your mind. Maybe you're thinking about something that happened earlier, or you're thinking about something that might happen later on. So just being aware of anything that's coming into this meditation with you physically, emotionally, or any thoughts. Okay, but doing this, we're not going to get carried away into that experience. We're just going to recognize that it's there. And then we're going to choose to move our focus into embodied awareness. So taking the attention into the physical sensations of the body and observing any of those sensations arising or fading by themselves. And you as the observer. So maybe bringing curiosity. Maybe imagining you've never actually felt these sensations before. And maybe a curiosity to really listen to what the body wants to tell you. So beginning with all the awareness of sensations on the surface of the body. And these sensations, they connect us to the outside world. Sensations on the skin or in the muscles or the bones. So touch or pressure, temperature. Maybe starting with any points of contact. 
perhaps you're aware of the weight of the body on the surface that you're sitting on or lying on and you can notice any differences in, in those sensations of pressure at different points of the body. And maybe you're aware at points of contact that some, some places might be quite hot or some points of contact might be cooler. So what's the, what's the sensation of temperature? And it might be you also notice that the body is in contact with itself. Depending on how you're sitting. So maybe just scanning to notice all the different places that the body's in contact with itself. Maybe the arms can feel contact with the sides of the body. Maybe the hands are in contact with the chair or the thighs. Maybe the toes are touching each other. Or the fingers. You might also be aware of contact between the lips and the eyelids. You might be aware that some places of contact are quite sweaty. There might be places where you feel your body is softly cushioned. There may be other places where sharp edges or hard surfaces are touching your body. And isn't it amazing how the body tells us exactly what it needs you know, it's aware of any places where the pressure of the weight of the body might be causing discomfort in the muscles or the bones or any places where sharp edges might be pressing into the skin. It's also monitoring our posture and our balance because it knows how the weight is distributed from one side to the other and from front to back. And we can tune into this awareness. Tuning into what the body knows already. Checking in with uh, sensations on the surface of the skin. Are there any places where the clothing might be tight and restrictive? And what about places where your clothing might almost caress your skin as you breathe? And as you go all through the different regions of your body, you might find places where there's pins and needles. The body might be saying, you know, you just need to shift your posture a little bit. Something's pressing on a nerve. So it sends you this pins and needles sensation. There might be places where you're itching. Your body's trying to bring attention. Maybe a mosquito bite or something irritating the skin. Might be places where... <coughs> I told you my dog was going to bark. 
so noticing that reactivity. When you hear thunder and a barking dog can you jump out of your skin, <laughs> do you notice anything going on in the heart rate? Do you notice any changes on the surface of the skin? Maybe perspiration or the hairs on your skin rising? Noticing that reactivity. And what's going on in your muscles right now? Perhaps you're just beginning to relax again after that barking intervention. So just quickly scanning the body. Do the muscles feel relaxed? Or are they tense? And we're not just talking about an emotional state here because the muscles know that they have to support your posture. So we can tune in to knowing how the body knows the posture, the balance, by being aware of which muscles are contracted and which are relaxed. So we could scan the toes, are they gripping? Are the muscles of the toes contracted to grip into the floor? Or are the muscles on the top of the foot contracted to lift your toes up in the air? Maybe the calf muscles have a certain tension. The thigh muscles, the buttocks. The muscles of the back or the abdomen. You might be aware of the movement of the rib muscles as you breathe. You might be aware of muscles in your hands or your fingers. They might be relaxed or tense. Muscles in the shoulders and neck. And if you notice any pain, could you describe it as burning? or pulsing, or aching, or something else. Is the body asking you to change posture? So when you ask your body what it needs, how it is, how are things with me today? How would your muscles answer that question? Hmm. Are there any parts of you in the muscles that are saying they might just need a little more tender loving care? Isn't it a beautiful thing how the body generates all these little nuances of sensations? Very, very precise and very, very specific. And isn't it amazing that we can use our mindfulness to explore these and to learn what the body has to tell us? And what about the internal organs? What are they saying to you today? Coming into the digestion, maybe. Let's begin with the tongue in the mouth and the jaw and the lips because whether they are relaxed or tense the whole digestive system already knows and already reacts. So coming into awareness of how your tongue and your jaw are feeling right now. And then what about your stomach? Is it telling you that you're hungry? 
or maybe a sense of satisfaction. Maybe it's digesting breakfast or dinner. Mm. And is the digestion a process of ease or discomfort? And when you ask the gut and the bladder to tell you what you need, are they telling you that you're comfortable? Or are they reminding you that you might need a comfort break? Hmm. Now let's bring our attention up to the chest and the belly. Let's begin with the heartbeat. So as you check in with this heartbeat, let's be grateful for this amazing muscle, this pump, the only part of the body that is self-sustaining. The, the heart that pumps the carbon dioxide blood to the lungs and then the oxygenated blood back to itself and to the rest of the body. So keeping the blood pumping to the brain and all the organs in the body, the bones, the muscles, every single cell carrying nutrients, oxygen, also taking blood to the liver to be filtered and also to the kidneys so that they can extract waste products Mm. So this heart knows everything that's going on in the body and it knows when you need more oxygen or when your blood pressure is high or low and the heart responds, reacts by beating faster or slower. So when you listen to your heartbeat or feel your heartbeat, what's it telling you now? What about the breath? Dropping in to observe the breath as it breathes all by itself. Every in-breath brings energy into the body and every out-breath takes the body towards relaxation. This beautiful balance, energizing and relaxing. So following the pattern of physical sensations of each in-breath and each out-breath. Whether your body is needing more oxygen, maybe you have some emotions in you that are bringing agitation and a sense of needing to be prepared for danger. Or maybe you hear a barking dog and thunderstorm. You might notice your heartbeat and your breathing speed up. The breathing comes faster and shallower. 
And if you're in a state of relaxation and calm, you might notice your heartbeat slows down. Your breathing is more relaxed and deeper. So asking the breathing, how am I in this moment? What's going on in my body? Tuning into the physical sensations of breathing and seeing what they have to say. And from the breath, opening up to awareness of sounds. Just the sounds as sounds. If you notice your mind trying to say, oh yeah, there's thunder, there's a car. Try to let go of those labels and just come back to, oh, that's a deep rumbling, rises and fades. And there's a swishing sound and the purring of a motor. But get rid of that word motor and just go, yeah, there's that kind of throaty purring noise. And there it arises and now it's faded. You might notice the volume or the pitch, or the duration of the sounds. The rhythm. Whether they're constant or changing. You might hear sounds from your own body and it might be telling you about your digestion you might hear your own breathing you might hear your computer fan a mosquito So these sounds are just vents in the environment around us and we're just observing them, noticing that they have qualities all of their own. But as you listen to sound it's almost inevitable that you're going to notice thinking. Soon enough, a sound is going to trigger a thought and that's going to take you into thinking. So recognising that reactivity that events in our natural environment will always trigger off the thinking mind. And it might take us places far, far away from where we are now. Here we are sitting in this moment, in this place, and a little sound might trigger a thought, and suddenly we're into a memory of things that happened years ago, or planning something that hasn't happened yet, or imagining what things might be like. So, for this meditation, if you notice that you're away in thinking, well done for noticing the thinking mind. It's always busy. It's always reacting. 
to whatever is around you or happening at this moment. But the interesting thing is, where does it go? So for today, just noticing planning or memory or rumination, stories, and then just letting those thoughts go and choosing to bring your attention back to an anchor point, whether it's the feet in contact with the floor or the breathing or the hands. And as you go through this process of listening to sounds and thoughts, you might be aware of emotions or feelings. So maybe recognizing those two, anger, comfort, restlessness, frustration, and then letting those go on their way, choosing to bring your attention back to your anchor point. And then it's a bit like fishing, open awareness. You might be aware of the thunderstorm going on right now. So this is a good way to practice recognizing reactivity and bringing attention back to an anchor point. Letting it all go. How does it feel in your feet right now? How does it feel in your hands? And if you check in with the heartbeat or the breathing, what's your body doing now? And where are your thoughts going? And are there any emotions? That's a perfect opportunity to explore reactivity. But then choosing to bring the attention back to an anchor point, the feet grounded on the floor, maybe even just wriggling your toes. So continuing this practice for another minute or two on your own, noticing any reactivity in the body, in the feelings, in the thoughts, recognizing it when you notice it and dropping your attention back to an anchor point. We're going to close with a poem called The Sifter, Sifter by Naomi Shaib Nye. When our English teacher gave our first writing invitation of the year, become a kitchen implement in two descriptive paragraphs. I did not think butcher knife or frying pan. I thought immediately of soft flour showering through the little holes of the sifter 
and the sifter's pleasing circular swishing sound and wrote it down. Rhoda became a teaspoon, Roberto a funnel, Jim a muffin tin, and Forrest a soup pot. We read our paragraphs out loud. Abby was a blender. Everyone laughed and acted giddy. But the more we thought about it, we were all everything in the whole kitchen. Drawers and drainers, singing teapot and grapefruit spoon with serrated edges. We were all the empty cup, the tray. <coughs> this said our teacher, is the beauty of metaphor. It opens doors. What could I not know then was how being a sifter would help me all year long. When bad days came, I would close my eyes and feel them passing through the tiny holes. When good days came, I would try to contain them gently the way flour remains in the sifter until you turn the handle. Time, time. I was a sweet sifter in time and no one ever knew. <laughs>